Did you know that the essay is actually scored by a computer algorithm grading system? Well, if you didn't, you know, I, this is something I want to talk about here, and this is something that a lot of people are often interested in knowing about when I talk about this in my videos, but unfortunately, and in my opinion, the GED testing service has not really, they don't really have a lot of transparency about how this works. They call it the ASE, which I think stands for Automatic Scoring Engine, and basically, and this is what the GED testing service says uh, about how it works, basically. Um, they say that the automatic scoring engine catalogs the characteristics of a writing sample, compares those characteristics to real exemplar responses with known scores, and assigns a score based on similarity to existing exemplars. If no similar responses are found, the extended response is going to be scored by a human. So basically, the way I understand this, and this is just kind of my interpretation of it, it seems to me like, you know, they... A bunch of GED test like essays were once hand graded and so graded by people. And so the scoring engine is basically going to take your essay and it's going to kind of scan it somehow, I'm assuming, and it's going to uh, compare it to essays that are similar to it and uh, based off of the scores that were assigned uh, to those exemplar essays by humans, it's going to see how well does your essay match up to those. All right, and so that's kind of my understanding of it at least. And so these are just kind of my theories about how the essay algorithm works. But um, basically we do know that the testing service has told us that you need between 300 to 500 words to get a good score on your test. So there's really only two ways that this would make sense. Either A, maybe the uh, automatic scoring algorithm has some kind of word count feature, just like a Word document where it counts how many words yours has. And maybe if you have less than 300 words, maybe it just kind of marks it as a zero. Or it could be that when it takes your essay and compares it to the you know example cases, the example cases that have poorer scores might have fewer than 200 words. So it might have fewer than 300 words, I mean. So then in that case, if you write less than 300 words, your essay is going to be matched with the poorer scoring essays, if that makes sense. So that's just kind of my guess here. But um. We do know that there is a minimum length you have to write to get an acceptable score. All right, so um, basically, the next thing I would say here is that, you know, in order to make sure that you're not just writing like random junk and stuff like that, okay, I'm assuming that, you know, um, the algorithm is going to have some way of detecting like if you're just copying and pasting from the passages, because that's another thing that I see students do sometimes, like when they are writing, is they will copy and paste like large portions from the passages. So I'm assuming that the scoring engine has some way of detecting that. So, you know, you have to meet that word count of 300 to 500 words, but you can't just, you know, write anything in there to just write any kind of junk in order to achieve that word count, because I'm assuming that, you know, the algorithm is going to pick up if you're just, you know, taking things, copying large portions of the essay. All right. We don't know that for sure, but I'm just assuming that's how that would work. And so basically, you know, there's another urban legend out there then that kind of comes from this, you know, automatic scoring engine. Some people think that there's like kind of words and keywords and things you can put in your essay to kind of game the system. And my opinion on this is that, hey, if your essay is going to be matched up against other essays to see how similar it compares, then, you know, there's probably some kind of keyword matching that it uses to do that. But there's no real transparency about that. So, you know, my best advice on this would be to you know, use, there's certain words like transition words and things like that, that should be in your essay, which are going to make your essay stronger. And if you put these transition words and phrases into your essay, it's going to make your essay stronger, which will then hopefully make it more likely to match up against those strong essays. When the computer matches yours to, you know, those stronger essays, hopefully that'll give you a better score. All right. Other than that, you know, we're not really sure what kind of phrases really are the computer is looking for. So I just wouldn't expect to be able to gain, go in there and kind of game the system using keywords and stuff like that. All right. They deny that that's a thing that you can do. And so I just wouldn't worry about that. Just write it as if, you know, put in some of the stuff that I tell you to in this video if you want to. And, you know, try your best to write it as if a human's grading it. Um, and just let the score fall where it's going to fall because we don't really have much uh, knowledge about how the grading system really works. It's not really revealed to us. So unfortunately, I don't really have much more to say about that. But if you have any ideas about how it works, just put it down below. So another urban legend is that either 
there's something wrong with the computer grading system, like some kind of glitch that gives everybody zeros or that, you know, nobody gets points on the essay, everybody gets a zero no matter what you write. But I have heard though from other GED instructors that have done this for a long time, who do a lot of in-person instruction, that they do see a lot of students get zeros. So, you know, obviously the testing service, you know, is going to say, they're going to say that, hey, it's an urban legend that there's something wrong with the machine, the computer that gives everybody zeros. All right. But I have heard uh, instructors say that a lot of their students do get zeros sometimes. So, you know, the question is, are the students just not writing effectively and that's why they're getting zeros? Or is there something weird with the grading system that's giving people zeros? I don't know. All right. Who knows? Nobody knows. Um, but, you know, I would just focus on what you can control and just try to do the best that you can on the essay because if you follow the method that I'm going to teach you in this video and practice with it, you know, I can't guarantee anything, but you should be able to get some points at least for the essay, all right? That should be a realistic goal for most people. So this kind of goes along with the conspiracy theory that floats around sometimes that really comes from uh, people failing by the test, failing the GED test by like a point or two. And, you know, across all sections of the GED, not just RLA, I have seen a lot of people over the years report failing by like a point or two. And so, you know, I guess the question is, you know, did they just not do a good enough job answering the questions and, and they just got really close and just unfortunately they failed by a point or two? Or is there some kind of glitch or something in the system that causes people to fail by a point or two? Because this happens to a lot of people, all right? A lot of people fail by a point or two. You know, I don't know, all right? So I'm just going to kind of leave that up to you to decide what you think about that.